first of all, thanks for being an awesome host once again. Uh, year after year, you're doing this great. So thanks for that. Uh, all right, welcome. It's uh, already 9 p.m. in Germany. Um, so I already lay up for about an hour next to my daughter. And usually I go to bed at this time. But I will still try to bring some positive energy to this talk. So what's up, Cybonix? And welcome to Can I Build That with Ionic? If you have good eyes, you might be able to already see the tagline. Yes, you most likely can. This is a question that I get like every other week. Um, can I build like TikTok with Ionic? Can I build Instagram with Ionic? Can I build this with Ionic? And usually my answer is like, yeah, it depends. Uh, the backend is more important and yeah, we all know that. But today we want to focus really on the UI aspect in this 30 minutes. So the question is, how do we go from something like this, which is pretty cool. Like this is, this is basic Ionic. So you can go for input fields, you can go for buttons, you can get the background, you get the icon. So this is definitely a cool layout, but how do you go from good to great? I think this is a very big problem and I've reviewed a lot of Ionic applications and well, we've seen a lot of applications that look like the first uh, app here. Those are usually like in-house applications for companies and there's no problem with this at all. But if you want to build a great user experience, you definitely need more. So a uh, quick introduction, uh, introduction for everyone not knowing me. My name is Simon Grimm. You might also know me as Captain Ionic. Um, I run the Ionic Academy since I think, yeah, for five years now. Um, I have my blog DevDactic where I basically share every week or fortnightly Ionic tutorials. And just like Ionic runs everywhere the web is, you can also pretty much find me everywhere these days. So you can find me on YouTube uh, every Tuesday, new videos. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, group the Simonics. And yes, I'm also on Instagram and even TikTok. So don't say TikTok is only for teens. I've been way too much addicted to TikTok lately. Anyway, that's not the topic. The topic for today is first of all, we're going to talk about the problem. The problem, as mentioned in the beginning, how do you go from good to actually great with Ionic? For this, we need to take, uh, well, not one step, but I think actually like 10 steps back <laughs> to the very basics um, and talk about a few basics for styling as well as animations and gestures. Finally, we're going to break down some cool concepts and see how you might be able to actually achieve a real web native or complete native experiences with Ionic. And finally, I will look into my crystal ball for some predictions that I might be able to see coming up based on, well, quite a few years of experience with Ionic because I might not have the latest swag. I already saw that some people got the latest swag on uh, Twitter, but I probably got like the oldest swag and the most swag and like everyone, everything, just everything here. It's like the, the nerd version of Ionic. Anyway, um, let's begin with a question that I got in one of my surveys, which was, is there a way to avoid the typical Ionic look, the web renderish look? Because let's be honest, if you use Ionic, if you bring up Ionic Surf, if you bring up a cool application, Ionic is very opinionated about the UI and you're either gonna love it or you're like, mm, yeah, that's not my suit. And yes, it certainly does look a bit like this web renderers look sometimes. Ionic's doing a lot for great uh, mobile components, but some buttons, some components, they just have this, this certain look. But to understand this, we need to take a step back to like the stone age, to web components. Before Ionic came to version four, which was known as Ionic for everyone, there was Ionic one, two, three. And in those versions, you could just throw in your CSS styling and just style a page and everything was just a web page. But then with Ionic four, we got web components. Um, web components are pretty cool. Some might not say so, but they are actually pretty cool. Because what we now just need to do is write these five lines of code instead of doing something like this, because this is what's going on inside of Ionic components behind, like under the hood. You got an item uh, and this item is a web component. A web component is basically what you see on the right. It's a bunch of div uh, elements, perhaps some slots, spans, functionality. Everything is inside of that web component. We can just use 
ion item. That's so cool. But a lot of people were after this change to web components like, why? I can't style my app. My whole CSS is broke. What's going on? And yeah, that was kind of true. Um, but I think Ionic 4 was like already a few years ago. So we should definitely move on. That's why web components are epic. They use web APIs like the Shadow DOM, which encapsulate your content from the actual page, which means isolated component internals isolated from your actual DOM. This means it prevents styles from leaking out. Imagine a component from Ionic had the same CSS class like your page and would just flow over into your page. It would be horrible. So web components and Shadow DOM help to isolate these things. And most importantly, it helps to prevent breaking changes in the future, which is quite amazing. Because Ionic can actually, under the hood, uh, run updates, run code changes, do whatever they want to those components, and we can still use Ion Item. It's like pretty awesome. And there are a lot more great factors for web components. But how do we now actually style those web components? That was a question that <laughs> actually I think it still comes up every week. Because the styling is isolated, we can't just say Ion Item is now blue, because the styling is usually encapsulated from our own DOM. That's where CSS variables come into play. With CSS variables or CSS native properties, you can inject your styling into web components. If you don't know, you can just uh, select an item in your view, uh, uh, search for dash dash, and you will find a lot of CSS variables. Or if you don't know about this, <laughs> there's actually a section about CSS custom properties for every Ionic component in the documentation, which lists all the possible web uh, CSS properties that you can use. And by using these CSS variables, we are now able to inject our styling into web components and uh, basically make them ours. There's a tiny problem with this because Ionic can only have like a finite list of CSS properties for every component, but like the list of possible CSS values that you could set for every single element is a lot longer. And Ionic can't just uh, create all these CSS properties. I think they tried in the beginning after Ionic version 4 was released, but they quickly noticed that this was not something they can do for very long. So instead, they are now also using CSS shadow parts, which is an important part uh, of understanding how you can style basically everything about an Ionic component. This here is the JSX implementation of the Ion item from GitHub. And I just made two errors to the uh, important positions of the part. We got a part native up there. And toward the bottom, we got a part detail icon. So Ionic specifies these shadow parts on their web components so that we can finally use them. And as a quick note, you can, of course, find them in the documentation. Just check it out. For every Ionic component, there are CSS properties and CSS shadow parts, if there are any. Now, why are shadow parts important? Because with shadow parts, we can now achieve what we couldn't do before. We can now style every possible aspect of that component by using the right CSS syntax to target a specific part of a web component. That means we basically got superpowers and we can change Ionic components to be whatever we want them to be. And this makes a big difference because that really means uh, you're not bound to any specific out of the box styling. You got full control over the things and you can change them. Now, if we want to build truly native experiences, having a good understanding about CSS and web components is certainly helpful, but there's something else that we should take into consideration and that is the animation and something else. First, let's quickly talk about animation controller. The animation controller uses standard web animations API. So you could of course use like one of the hundred or thousand available CSS JavaScript styling libraries in the world, or you could actually use the implementation from Ionic for the animation controller because it is um, uh, exactly made for this case to build platform agnostic animations and to just offload all the work to the browser. 
you can trust the Ionic team. The Ionic team usually knows what they're doing. So by implementing the animation controller, they already got in mind, how can we get the best performance? How can we make this uh, the easiest possible way for Ionic developers? And that's exactly what you see with the animation controller. So this makes sure the browser handles everything because the browser is usually pretty good in running animations and our animations run smoothly. And on top of that, we have a quite easy API that could look like this, great animation, we add an element, we specify a duration, we specify iterations, we specify different states. So it's pretty obvious what's going on here. Additionally, two animations, there's a second uh, part that we need to know about and that is the gesture controller. It kind of falls in the same category. You can use it with any framework, uh, which means Ionic, React, Angular, Core, vanilla JavaScript, basically everything. And it's, again, a quite easy to learn syntax. Um, Michael, I don't I can see you, uh, Michael. Um, the gesture controller as well was made exactly for mobile apps. So it is very lightweight. You don't need to worry about this. The Ionic team has your back. And again, this is really, really easy. Um, just define the element on which you want to define a gesture, a threshold at which uh, part the animation should start, and then you have a name and probably an on move callback, which is called when the gesture moves. So this is really the basic to understand gestures and animations. This can become a bit more complicated if you add func functions for on start and on end, as we will see in some examples, but pretty much that's the core of a gesture. So it's actually quite easy. Okay, so far, let's recap this. We know Ionic web components, Shadow DOM encapsulated uh, styling. That means we need to use CSS properties or CSS variables to style those. And if we can't find the CSS property, we can use shadow parts if they're defined to inject any kind of CSS and make a component completely like we want it to look. Now with animations, okay, more fingers. Now with animations and gestures, we can not only make it look good and native, we can also make it feel native. And if we take a look now at three, hopefully real world examples, we're gonna need see that we need everything from this stack in combination to create great layouts. Let's begin with this. This is the Spotify application and I just uh, went to one of the pages. What we can see here is, um, a UI, a layout that feels just, it feels good. Um, at the same time, you might think it's too complicated to do this. Um, but if you break down this, and we're gonna do this for the others as well, you're gonna see that it's just, um, it's just like three, four different steps that are taking place. We don't need to talk about the tab bar and this player view up there, that's just static. Also the list of the titles and the stuff, everything's static. The only thing that's really going on here is like the cover at the top, it's shrinking. And then we have this gradient moving up. And at some point we also have the title in the top bar, but that's pretty much it. And you can do this with Ionic. So for example, if you're using Angular, you could use a host listener to the scroll event of your content. You would then um, calculate like a new opacity based on the distance you scrolled from top and probably also a padding to, uh, we add to the sides of the image. We can now do this in a performant way using one more thing. So we had animations and gestures and then also the Ionic DOM controller because the Ionic DOM controller helps us to update our DOM more efficiently. This means we're not hammering updates into the DOM at really, really bad times to get really, really bad performance. No, we're like batch updating the DOM at good times. This doesn't mean like the, the DOM controller waits for one or two seconds and then fires the update. No, it's definitely not like that. It's really pretty fast, but it's just at a better time. And Ionic just takes care of selecting the best time for this. Um, on the right side, you see the code. It's actually quite easy. Um, we're just running the DOM controller to with a write function and within we render the style. We change the opacity of the image and we add padding to the sides, which means we shrink the image basically and it becomes uh, less visible. At the same time, we are also using Ionic CSS variables to apply a linear gradient to the background. So no problem to use something like a linear gradient. You can just use that for Ionic CSS variables as well. As a result, this is my implementation of the, the Spotify view. 
And I think it comes pretty close to the original version, doesn't it? Um, yes, there are a few things that could be different, like the title going to the top, um, but that should be easy with Ionic components as well. Otherwise, I think I'm actually quite cool with that. Uh, let's do a second one. <laughs> this is kind of cool. Uh, this is WhatsApp, and within WhatsApp, within the chat, you can reply to something. And as we can see, I can just drag this message to the side, and let's break it down. What happens? I can drag that message, so along the X coordinate, um, there's a button appearing, this gray button with the image. And once I release it, it kind of flips back, it opens the keyboard <laughs> and shows this view. In a real application, stuff like this just feels native. It just feels like, yeah, of course it has to work like this. But usually if you implement something with Ionic, you, you don't do this out of the box. So you really need to go the extra mile for stuff like this. And of course, that's what I did as well. So to achieve something like this, you could use dynamic gestures. Basically, if you had a chat view with all the messages and the iteration, you would add a gesture to each of those messages or just to your messages, however you want to uh, do this. Um, I hope you can still see the code. Uh, it's actually quite small. Mm. Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, I think you can download the slides afterwards anyway. But what we need to do here is basically on move, we're going to move the card and change the X coordinate. At the same time, we're going to change the opacity of that button, which was on the left side and then revealed while we were dragging that message. And we also have a certain threshold. So after that threshold, we will trigger a vibrate. And we can do this simply by using capacitor, like the haptics plugin was just made for cases like this. Give the user a haptic feedback and vibrate. And then we can also use the on-end function. And on-end, we're just going to transition everything back to normal, everything back to like it was before. But at the same time, we also check if we cross that threshold. And if we cross that threshold, we're just going to trigger the reply, which is another function, which would then use the capacitor keyboard, for example, to bring up the native keyboard. And <laughs> you didn't know that you could do this with WhatsApp. <laughs> oh, it's a cool gesture. Um, and at the same time, also just show this uh, footer or whatever element above the keyboard. So pretty simple uh, setup, just dynamic gestures to every element, changing the opacity, and then triggering an engine. It is really not too hard. And as a result, here's my Ionic implementation of that. So I can drag it to the side. It reveals, um, like it reveals the button on the left side. Then it flips back. It opens the keyboard. Uh, and then it just shows this little bar above the input. Magic, no magic. Okay, uh, like we got, yeah, we got time for one more example. This is like my, probably my favorite example. Um, this is the Gmail application. And within the Gmail application, you can, of course, swipe an item. You can swipe it to the left uh, to trigger, I think, archive. You can trigger to the right uh, to delete it. But there's so much going on in this gesture, really. Let's break it down. If you start triggering the item, it first of all gets these rounded borders. It also gets a drop shadow at the bottom. So it looks like the item you just dragged is above the rest of the items. So at the two sides, we got different background colors. OK, no magic. We can do this somehow. And then also at some point, those icons <laughs> that are revealed come up bigger and they also vibrate. And of course, if you drag it to completely one side, the hate will go to zero and the message is archived or deleted. You wouldn't think that there's so much going on in applications, but that's just the fact if you want to build applications with a really, really native, native-like app experience. So let's break this down in our last application. For this, we might have to combine basically everything that we know. First of all, you would set up some animations because animations can just be created in the beginning and then you can trigger them whenever you want. You would set them up for the delete icon on the one hand side and for the trash icon on the other side. Uh, actually, it's for the trash and archive and the delete animation is changing the height of a row to zero. On top of that, uh, you would then define the gestures. Uh, which basically need to um, transform the elements on move. So they need to move them right and to the left. Um, and 
in the end, we need to execute probably some functions and as a bonus, of course, integrate capacitor for haptic feedback. So let's start with the beginning of the gesture. And that gesture is actually pretty easy. Once you start dragging, you would add the rounded class. So we can add the drop shadow and we can add the rounded borders. If we go to the left or the right, we would use different background colors. And of course, we would use CSS variables, for example, the primary color or just green, and transform the X uh, value of an item, which moves them along this axis. Then we could also check for the animation breakpoint. So let's say at 200 pixels, we want to make the item bigger. So at that point, the trash icon or the archive icon will be animated. But we careful, just do this once. Otherwise, you get like this, and it doesn't really look good. So we're at this space. What's going on now? We could go back to default, or we could slide out the complete row. If we just go back to default, uh, we would just ease out our transformation and just reset everything and remove the board, uh, the rounded class. If we would uh, trigger the archive or delete animation, so we would completely swipe an item out to one of the sites, we would, of course, move the item out of the view and then run our delete animation, which at the same time would collapse the height of the row to zero. Now, interesting is that also Ionic already thought about this and gave us a callback, the unfinished callback of an animation. Because if we collapse it, if we trigger this animation and at the same time remove the item already, you're up for trouble because you're using an iteration. And if you remove the item from the iteration, guess what happens? So everything will collapse. And that's where a cool uh, delete animation unfinished block comes into play. And as a result, here we go, Simon's implementation of this list. Oh. So satisfying, so satisfying, really. I just love this. This is really like my favorite thing. Uh, OK. Um, in the examples that you've seen, uh, you only saw Angular code. I'm sorry for that. I'm still a React noob, because I started with React last week. If I didn't note this, ooh, oh, Simon's so getting into React. Um, but you can definitely use it with React as well. So here's code, create animation from Ionic React, or same for Vue create animation from the Ionic view package. Um, this is just possible, no excuse. You can do this with React View and everything you think of. So I'm pretty sure that we can say, can I build that with Ionic? Yes, definitely approve. We can build everything with Ionic. I would really love to have this like myth busted thing in here, but I didn't found it. so. I'm going to take this approve thingy here because I also built this Netflix application and this food ordering application. And if you now say, OK, Simon, but you came up with all those examples. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, I did. But there are a lot of great Ionic applications in the wild. I did a lot of Ionic app reviews on YouTube. And I've seen cool applications like the Coin Viewer, like Cybercode Online. This is amazing. I actually played this for about a week. Um, the Chinese Peach application. There are so many great Ionic applications on the App Store, and you most likely don't even know that they are made with Ionic. Um, I quickly want to wrap this up because we've seen quite a lot about what you can do, but I also want to make some or throw some predictions into this so we can talk about this next year. I'm definitely going to screenshot or record this. So my prediction for Ionic and the future of Ionic UI is that we Mm, or that the Ionic UI components might actually become a bit less relevant in the future. The problem I see is that we probably don't need an Ion label, an Ion text, an Ion badge, probably not even a card or an item. Um, so I just think that these components might become a tiny bit less relevant, while at the same time, the utilities that we've seen, like the animation controller, the gesture controller, which are made for exactly this use case, they continue to be important. And probably we're even going to see extended functionalities uh, so we can build easier page transitions, which you can definitely also do. Um, but that's just probably something that we might see in the future. Again, this is just my predictions. I'm not part of the Ionic team. This is no financial advice. I also think that we're going to see something like bring your own styling, because the trend is just going to, um, OK, we got Tailwind, we got Bootstrap, we got uh, Chakra for React. I don't know what the React boys or uh, girls are also using. But a lot of people are just bringing their own styling to the table and want to build mobile applications. So um, I think 
bring your own styling becomes more important. And Ionic UI and the Ionic styling just somehow has to work with the styling that other people are bringing into the mix. And they just want to create cool animations and probably just bring um, specific components from Ionic into the app. Just like with Ionic React, where you import the single components, probably want to see something like this in the future as well, where you can just pick out, OK, I only want the alert controller and the modal controller and probably the card from Ionic. Um, so this is probably something that's going to happen. Um, as well, I think we're going to see more specific solutions. We already saw this. We saw the great bottom sheet, uh, the draw thing component lately. Um, and we also saw the updated ion date component. And uh, I think just the pop over, the accordion, these specific solutions, I think they will continue to be important. There will be more of them. Um, because they bring a real value to the table instead of stuff like an ion label. Nothing against the ion label, but it's, well, you can do this uh, in other ways. Okay, this is everything for my predictions. We're going to see how this plays out in the future. If you now think, I want to build also these kind of web native experiences, go check out buildwithionic.com. I've written a whole book about the topic of creating these uh, custom Ionic UI experiences. And of course, if you didn't know, I run the Ionic Academy uh, for the last five years. I helped, I think, more than 5,000 Ionic developers to learn Ionic, to build awesome Ionic applications. At this point, we got like 70 plus courses. There's new content every month. We got templates, we got a community. So if you need a starting point to learn Ionic, to get support, um, just check out the Ionic Academy and I would love to welcome you inside. And for everyone, one more thing. I'm currently working on a new project called Ionic Blocks. If you didn't know this, go check it out right now, ionicblocks.com. It is, well, if you know Tailwind UI, then you might know what Ionic Blocks is about. It's basically a project where you can find predefined page templates, HTML, CSS, four pages like login, registration, settings, account, lists, stuff like this in an easy to find and to copy way. Go check it out, ionicblocks.com. It is not yet released, but I would love to have you on the beta list so we can have a little exchange about things that you might want from this project. And with that, I think we're finished. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this talk. I think we are in time, so that's pretty cool. Um, if we get any questions, uh, I don't know if we'll be able to answer them in two minutes, but I will certainly also join the Discord channel for at least a few minutes.